Welcome back. Welcome back to Coastal Under Quarantine. So guys, we didn't put a video up yesterday. Cody had some work to do and she stayed up all night basically. I was awake until two o'clock in the morning. It was later than that, about half two. Yeah. <clears throat> it's been, um, it's just been like a really odd couple of days. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to, to update everybody on how Jean is doing because we're still getting a lot of comments saying that um, people are asking about her and, and sending their well wishes. So um i can't remember what the last update was but over the last few days um she she took a turn for the worst um she became really ill and they said they were taking her off all of her medication which i think i told you about it then got to the point where the hospital called my cousin her son and said you need to get to the hospital right now if you want to see her alive um things are really not looking good and if you do come and see her you're only allowed in for a certain amount of time um you have to wear protective equipment and when you leave you have to go and stay in her house by yourself for 14 days and you're not allowed to leave at all so he agreed to those conditions and he went and seen her um he didn't tell me exactly what she was like while he was there i think the idea of going to see your mum in that state, knowing that that might be the last time you see her, was probably a bit much. But he is isolating now, alone in her house by himself. Uh, the next day, there was an update saying that she had picked up. Um, she was she'd ate a yogurt on her own. Um, she hadn't really had much of a conversation, but she'd spoken, which was really positive. I kind of feel like that was because he'd gone and seen her because if you're on your own it's easy to deteriorate and when you've got people around you who care about you it kind of give, keeps you going so i do believe that she probably picked up because he'd gone and seen her but then the next day she deteriorated again they said that they had a really bad night and her oxygen level um had been upped from 94 percent to 100 percent. that's still the same now she's still on 100 percent oxygen and um she's still fighting um it's not the worst she's been, but it's not the best she's been. So as of right now, she's still on 100% oxygen. <clears throat> they kept her on her medication, even though they said they were going to take it off her. And as of right now, um, they're starting to lower her morphine, her painkillers. So he hasn't specified whether they're taking them down because they want to try and get them off her, or whether it's because she doesn't need them as much. But we're taking it as something positive because hopefully she's getting as this the longer this goes on for she's hopefully the stronger she, she's better, getting yeah. so <clears throat> it's not it's not bad news it's not good news but it's hopeful news so um that's that's the update well, it's with positive Jean. in a sense of it hasn't got any worse yeah so. it did it did get worse but then she she brought it back so it's definitely better news than than what we've had isn't it so it's good, it's good stuff um, so I just wanted to update you on that and let you know how she was doing and thank you all again for all of your thoughts and um, messages and really mm. kind prayers and stuff that you've sent. It's really been really it's been really nice to read them um, just to let even just myself know that there's a lot of people out there who, who care about her health so it's been really nice to read them messages. Um, so the next thing was uh... We've been reading some news. Yeah, we? so we we had a little look online, just like reading general news, and we see that the uh, youngest baby in the world has died of coronavirus, and that was from Batangas, uh, which is pretty sad news. Twenty nine days old, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think okay. the second youngest baby was six weeks old, and mm. from America, so uh, twenty nine days old. Man, that's pretty pretty bad that um which made us wonder what is happening with the ta'al family still because they was all in the tents right there was like six families per tent and we haven't heard anything um about if they're still in the tents or we don't know anything do we because no. obviously we can't get there and see <clears throat> what's going on so um, yeah I, I, if anybody knows what's the situation I think it was in Belletti. Um, well, there was a couple. You've got some fluff on your eyelash. Um, there was a couple of different sites where there was a lot of people staying. And if you watched our video where we went and done our relief mission and and handed out um, 
items to these families you will have seen that they were staying in really big tents um, with a minimum of five families in each tent and each family mm. had at least five or six family members some of them had 17 family members and they were all in one big tent together which obviously um, they can't help the situation is the situation you know they're in that situation because <coughs> of the, the towel eruption but what has happened to them um, with this situation because obviously they can't socially distance from each other and other families because they're all like living together. Who gets their food? Um, like, yeah. The donation thing is going to be a problem, right? Because everyone's on lockdown. So the people who like like ourselves who are just going to go who who will go in regularly because we we did speak to a couple of different charities will go in regularly to to hand out um, food and yeah. stuff like that to these people. They're not going to be able to do that now because there's no movement throughout of Luzon. Yeah. So we just really would like to know what's happened with them. Um, yeah, because like, they was relying on donations pretty much. So if no one can go and take any food or anything like that, then I don't know how they're going to... I know that when we were there, the day that we went, um, while we when we first arrived and we was putting all of the rice into different bags... Um, there was actually a visit from the, the government to hand out cash uh, relief to them. So I know that they're probably being supported by the government to an extent, but obviously that isn't going to change their circumstances as far as how many of them are living in really close proximity to each other. Um, have they been helped in any way to do with that? So it's something that we're we're kind of... It's like, you know, it's close to our heart. We, we, we really spent a long time before yeah. we went to the philippines okay. gathering donations um we had a whole suitcase of items that we brought from the uk to the philippines and then from manila we got a car the only reason we actually hired the car this year was to be able to drive to batangas to do our our little um Hmm. care package relief mission um to the tal family so it's it, it it's something that we wanted to do before we gave the car back. We wanted to go back again. Yeah. And we did. couldn't because lockdown happened. And um, we've thought about them quite a lot since we've been back. And if anybody knows anything, we'd really appreciate a little update because, you know, like their mm. life was difficult anyway. Thing is as well, that if they was getting like help with like money and stuff like, like that, I don't think the Philippines is really in like a great position right about now to carry on like handing out money when the whole economy is going to be messed up right right now. That goes for every country as well, every by the way. Every country's economy is going everyone's, to be messed up. Everyone's economy, like they're saying, like in England, for example, they're saying every day that we're in lockdown is costing two and a half billion. Pounds. Like that's per day, right? So... If the Philippines is something similar, or even if it was half that, that's still like 1.25 billion or whatever. That's a lot of money, like the Philippines are already losing and then having to pay more. And they've got to also support all the families that, every single family basically, that can't work right right, right about now. So I don't know if they're even gonna be high on the list. So we'd really appreciate it if anybody knows or anyone lives in Batangas that can uh, just keep us updated um, with what is actually happening there. While we're on the subject, actually, <clears throat> we received an email, do you remember, about two, three days ago? Um, and it's actually from somebody um, who goes by the name of Peter. And um, Peter's doing something similar to what we done um, when we went and helped these families. We took food and items that they needed, um, sanitary products and, you know, general just hygiene, clean teeth, toothbrush, that kind of stuff. Um, and he said that he moved to Manila a few months ago. Um, he has 70 Filipino staff, so I think he's actually a foreigner, it sounds like he is by his name. And since moving there, he's experienced the lockdown and its effect of what it's done to all of the families. And there are a lot of families who can't afford to feed themselves and their families outside of the bigger cities in the provinces. And he 
understands that there is a no work, no pay regime, which means that obviously a lot of Filipinos, whatever they earn that day is what they live on for the day. That it's not a case of having mm. savings there. Um, so he's he's set up like a catering company, um, or he's he's partnered with a local catering company and raised five thousand um, dollars in order to feed the people who can't afford to be fed. Um, it costs around one pound per meal, which is about 60 peso, 62 peso, something like that, um, per meal, including the delivery of that meal. And he's aiming to raise a further 30,000 US dollars in order to continue helping feed the families. But he's finding it difficult because they've spent a lot of the money that they've already raised on doing this and they're not getting the funds in as fast mm. as, as he would like. <clears throat> so um, he emailed us and asked um, if we would be able to help him create some awareness because there are a lot of people from around the world who watch our, our videos. Some of them are Filipinos who work abroad and some of them are people who live in the country um, and just generally people who enjoy the Philippines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the links to his website, Facebook page and profile um, in the description. And if anybody would like to donate anything at all to um, his, his organization, then the links will be there. Um, if you imagine it's only one pound per meal. So even if you can only do one pound or two pound, you fed one extra person or two extra people. <clears throat> so um, we'll leave that there. We will speak to Peter directly ourselves um, and and discuss things with him. But we just wanted to get that out there because what he's doing is similar to what we like to do when we're in the country, which is I like we like we said this didn't we we like to see people go the, to the country and make a difference rather than just take what they can out of it there's no use as a foreigner coming into the country and seeing the best of it and ignoring and people going. living yeah. the worst of it so um when it comes to stuff like that we like to support <clears throat> it and it's it just was similar to what we done so good man pete good man so if anyone has any information we would really appreciate um an update if possible on on kind of what the situation is over there and um, leave your comments and let us know. Um, we we are trying to get back to as many comments as we can. I was up until about three o'clock doing the comments after I'd done work yesterday. And then I've done a lot of them today as well. And it just doesn't feel like any of them are going. Because as soon as I do some, I refresh it. And the amount that I've done has been replaced with new ones. So I just feel like I'm not I'm not getting into it. And he just plays his computer all day and doesn't help me anymore. You know what, I think I'm at, well, I, we might actually have to like start making a designated one, time. Yeah, a one <laughs> one day a week vlog where we go through the comments and we like all read the comments together, right? So that we haven't actually got a reply. We can just reply through the video. <laughs> I think that might help. Do you know what? Some of the comments are actually hilarious. I sat there yesterday for about <laughs> half an hour to an hour after I finished my work with, with Google Translate on one screen and the comments in the other screen and there was a thread of like 100 comments where everyone was just arguing in Tagalog and I was Google translating them. My eyes were on fire because I was so tired. <laughs> but it was so funny to read the comments. And do you know what? I have to say, if we have like, we get a couple of people who bash our videos because some people just come on, see the title and think, foreigners just trying to make money out of the Philippines without realizing that we've invested into the country we're not just coming and taking um and they don't know who we are and what we do so they just leave a little horrible comment but for every one comment that we get that's bad we've got at least 20 people in the in the sidelines ready to pounce <laughs> on that basher <laughs> as soon as that comment is left uh, and I just want to say thank you because <laughs> I just have not got the time to argue with these people who just don't have a clue and I just really appreciate that you've got our back <laughs> it's a nice feeling to me it is, it's a nice feeling it? I feel like we're a team 
<laughs> I feel like we're a, a big team, but we're a team. It's like, um, it's funny because if you like, if 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 you've just found our channel like randomly and you see the titles and you think oh just more foreigners trying to make money off the country and stuff it actually makes me quite like smile a bit it's quite funny because um because we've got the house and stuff there now like people don't wouldn't even think like to check to see if we have like what the actual thing is they just think that we're like all the other foreigners mm. and actually I think we're probably one of the very, very few that have actually like put in a lot of money to the country. And uh, we only say, or we only do what we do because we love the Philippines so much. So it actually makes me laugh so bad. We've actually had, um, and this was something that actually shocked me, but a couple of years ago there was um, some other people who, who we spent some time with in the country. And... Um, we weren't filming because it was the evening and we'd all gone out for a drink and dinner together and they turned around and said, so come on guys, be honest, no cameras are on now. Do you come to the Philippines for the views? And we just looked at each other and was like, hang on a second, you don't go to, you don't travel from one side of the world to the other, spend every single day of your life in your own country saving every single penny that you can save we sacrifice going out with our friends we sacrifice celebrating our birthday we mm. sacrifice buying anything for ourselves to have as much money as we possibly can to come over to the philippines with and when we come over we don't just like we do go and see some incredible places but we always go away from the touristy areas and whatever money we spend, we always try and do it through a local person. So if we go on a boat trip, we'll just go down to the port and get a local family man and give the money to him and his family directly. Or, um, you know, we always try and give our money fairly to the people who aren't going <clears> to <throat> gain a lot from it in business. So not like a big corporate <clears throat> hotel or not a big, you know, like family run businesses and stuff. And when we do come over, we do things like our Batangas Day where we went and, you know, gave um, the stuff out to the people. And we went to the Aita tribe the year before in Pinatubo. And we like to do these kind of things, which means that we're we're putting more in than, than and we're getting an experience out of it rather than taking mm. anything from the country, which is what I think that you should do. But it's funny to see that, like, people, even though they, they know that we do this, we, they know how we spend our money and how we like the experiences that we like to get and that we've bought a house we haven't rented a house like we bought one <laughs> and to think that you would do that for views just absolutely blows my mind because i think like I it's, think it's, it's, it's extreme to think that someone would do that i'll tell you what we're gonna do if you've made it this far into the vlog then this is probably the best bit of info because it's like up it's 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 gonna be entertaining. I think we should make a video. The next video we make should be on why YouTube is a bit of a problem and the problems that vloggers have and the problems that vloggers also create by doing certain things and how and why we've grown so slowly compared to other people. Yeah. I think that video would be pretty interesting for you guys to watch and for us to read the comments and stuff as well mm. so i think the next video we do is going to be on those things so or not the next one the <clears> one <throat> after because if there's anything that you want to know and ask and, and find out about on that subject you can leave the comments below and we can get them all together and then make a video on it so if it's not the next one it'll be the one after yeah. well either way we can still make the video tomorrow and then we could if you once we've got the comments in, we can read them and we can go through them mm. and we can speak about that as well. Because I think since uh, since this year, we've kind of like grown a little bit extra. And I think that it's very important for people to stay level headed on the ground and not to like get all caught up in the hype and growth and stuff like that. So I want to really get that video made so we can all have a little discussion about it. So I think that'll be good. Yeah, I think that's a good idea um, as well, to be fair. 
yeah so we can we can go into it a bit deeper tomorrow and then we'll get all your comments and stuff and then we'll it'll give all you guys <clears throat> especially all the new people because it has been an incredibly quick growth over the last two weeks i think in the last 28 days <clears throat> we've actually got three and a half thousand subscribers in the last less than a month which for us and our, our channel is, is a huge growth spurt. It's just not something that really happens to us, is it? But that's, we'll, we'll go into that in our, in our video. But for all of the new people, uh, especially who have joined us because of certain videos, it will be really good for you guys to get to know us on a bit more of a personal level and what we believe in and what we think um, and how we think of our channel. So I think that is definitely a good way to end it. And if there is anything that you guys want to know about why we do YouTube, what our opinion on it is, and why we don't really collaborate and that kind of stuff, then then leave a comment below and, and we'll we'll cover it all in our video. Yeah. So interesting video next guys. I'm actually really excited to do it, <laughs> to be honest. Well, You're just um, gonna bash every other YouTuber. Hey look, hey look. <laughs> We're gonna be straight honest. We're not gonna sugarcoat stuff and talk a load of shit. Basically, um, we're gonna get to the get to the point, and uh, I'm I'm excited. So we're gonna see you guys tomorrow, and I want to see you guys bright and early, ready for this video. <laughs> Stay safe, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Follow the rules. Don't cause a ruckus. Be good, Panoyes. And we'll see you in the next one. Pa'alam.